Good evening, everybody. Cap and I are back with our talk about Revelation. I'm very happy to see everyone tonight. Sorry, I had a few technical difficulties, but we got it figured out and we're here. We hope that you're being blessed. We hope you're staying healthy. We hope that uh, all of your loved ones are healthy and safe. And we pray that you find um, this time during the social distancing to, to draw close to God and to draw close to friends in new ways. And so we pray blessings on you and, uh, and you are, we appreciate you gathering with us tonight around uh, Facebook. Um, so we're going to start with a prayer and thank you for being here and thank God for being here. God, we, we come before you as your children um, recognizing our weakness and unsure of, of what's happening in the world, but sure of who you are. Um, I love the phrase that uh, Cap shared with me that Marlon used to say, we don't have to be afraid of um, what's coming tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. We know the God who knows everything. And so we, we ask you to be present. We thank you for the breeze. We thank you for the beautiful weather we're having. We thank you for the sounds of children playing and, and birds singing. We, we thank you for the fat reminders from nature that they, they aren't stressed at all about, about this virus. Of course, it's not a threat to them, but, but they trust you, and we want to trust you too. So be with us, be with all of those loved ones we have that uh, we are separated from. We pray that you would help be present in, in every situation. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you for calling us to be your people. We pray that you would teach us and open our eyes to opportunities to serve and to care for each other and for our neighbors. Help us to love you and love our neighbors and be like Jesus. It's through him that we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to dig right in. I'm going to lean on your arm. Sure. Um, I'm going to dig right in on Revelation. We, we opened with talking about those three kinds of, those three genres of literature that it is. That, that Revelation is first and foremost a, a prophecy. It is John coming in to critique the social situation the exact same way we think of Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea and Micah and Zechariah all coming in and critiquing. And so it's in that vein of, of literature. It's also um, an apocalypse, meaning that it is a revealing, it's an uncovering. It is, there's a mystery of God going on that God is now making known to his people. And it's when we're beginning to see it take place. This fits, of course, perfectly with Jesus' common message to the people of, 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 of Israel as he is moving about from Galilee down to Jerusalem and he's teaching the people the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's talking about the revealing of the kingdom of heaven. And so this fits perfectly with the gospels. It, it is also a letter. It's a letter to seven churches. And next week we'll actually get into those letters. But I want to go ahead and finish out some conversation from chapter 1. So if you'll bear with me, I'd like to read to you the whole of chapter 1. And let's listen to what this message has to say to us tonight. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Now notice... When we did prophets, we talked about the fact that they were seers, that they saw things, but that they are also hearers who heard the word of God and then shared it with others. So watch, because John's going to keep flip-flopping back and forth between, I heard in heaven this, and I saw this. We want to pay attention when that happens. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear 
and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is to come, excuse me, from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before the throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. Priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. Now Jesus speaks. If you were reading in a red letter Bible, these this next, I, John, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, to Pergamum, Thyatira, to Sardis, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest, his, ed, his head his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth, came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining with full voice. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he placed his right hand on me, saying, here come the red letter words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living. I was dead and see, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Now write what you have seen, what is and what is to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels or messengers of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Now, before we dig into the text, I want you to just pause for a second. and Think about how that description of Jesus made you feel when John hears this voice like the sound of mighty waters, and he turns to look at the voice, and he sees this figure like the Son of Man in a long white robe with a gold sash, with white hair and flaming eyes, and a sword coming out of his mouth. Cap, what did it make you feel? How did you just viscerally respond to that imagery? I would think it would be all the power that comes. So you felt power. Yeah. Power. Okay. So you're an old race car guy. When when you're on the track and the and the and the I don't know the correct terminology, but the dragster is burning out mm -hmm. the tires, getting them ready for the race. Is that a moment of power? Is that a moment of anticipation? It's anticipation. I don't. Power comes when you're on the track. Right. Right. But I mean. Do you kind of get a sense of the power of yeah. the car when he's burning out the tire? Yeah. I mean, like, 
don't you kind of stand there and feel, okay, how's this race going to go? And you listen to the sound of the engine and you oh, yeah. look at how the tires are turning and maybe even how the car is shifting. And that creates all this anticipation of the power that's coming. Yes. Don't you feel like that's kind of what John's doing yes. to us? Yeah, that's a good analogy. I mean, he's kind of setting us up here. He's, he's giving us this emotional response. I mean, for someone to have flaming eyes and a sword coming out of their mouth, yeah. woo! I mean, this is, this is speaking great volumes about authority. I mean, just imagine for a second. I don't know that this ever happened, but imagine for a second that you're a local governor or even the emperor in Rome, and someone shares with you this vision. I looked and this is what I saw. I mean, even as an emperor with command of thousands of armies, you're not a you guy who's got flame in your eyes. Yeah, you don't have that kind of power. You don't have a sword yeah. coming out of your mouth. And and that's the imagery that's being set up here for us. And 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 John is, is getting us ready for this big showdown that's coming in this book. And if we don't catch that, if we're not if we're not in tune with that, then we're kind of missing what's going on. Now let me let me back up and talk about this part. I said I wanted us to think about in in this in the lettering of this church in this nature of it as a letter. John writes, "I John, your brother who share with you in Jesus the persecution of the kingdom, the patient endurance, excuse me, the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance was on the island of Patmos." I just want to think about tonight those three things. So clearly, John has been exiled onto the island of Patmos. He's, he's off the coast of Asia Minor. He's closer to Ephesus, to what we call modern-day Turkey, than he is to Italy. But he's in the sea in between. And he's been put over there, most likely, because they don't like the work he's doing because they don't trust Christians probably at, at, during one of the persecutions under Nero John's been put on this island so he is being persecuted and we know right now what it's like to shelter in place well John is literally sheltering on an island that he can't get off of he is literally held captive and what he has there with him, apparently, are some writing materials. And he has no way of growing food. He has no way of providing for himself. So what we know culturally about the way Rome handled their prisoners is they would allow friends or family of John to occasionally make trips to the island and bring him supplies. And then John would most likely put scrolls in empty wine jars and send them back. And then people would get these scrolls and they would copy them and, and pass them around to the churches. So here we have John, a sharer in the persecution. So whatever the Christians on the island, I mean on the mainland are feeling in terms of persecution, whatever loneliness, whatever lack of leadership that they feel because of John's absence, John wants them to know he's in it with them. He's in it with them. And I want you to know he's in it with us. And, and John's not the only one who writes about persecution. Peter writes about persecution and sharing in persecution and counting it an honor to suffer as Christ suffered. Paul, too, writes in Philippians in particular, in chapter 3, I want to know what it is to share in Christ's sufferings that I might also understand what it is to share in the power of his resurrection. So it's real easy to talk hypothetically as a preacher about sharing in suffering of Christians in the, in the global kingdom of heaven. But it's very difficult for us as American Christians to think about sharing in suffering until we actually experience some suffering. And right now, we're experiencing it. Yes. And right now, we're in a place where we ought to think about 
what is it like to live in Indonesia or the Philippines or or China and to be under severe restrictions and to have limited resources to live in an, an, a part of Africa that's experiencing a famine? Diego, that's enough. What's that like? And so we can share in the sufferings and it's important for us to let that part of the message of book of revelation come through to us because we'd like to believe we're never going to have to suffer. But now the reality has come to us. God doesn't promise that sharing in the sufferings. That's what God promises. We are not in this alone. And then he says, and in the kingdom, and I don't want you to miss this. The kingdom of heaven is very different from the kingdoms of this world. And I don't care what party you registered under for the election. I don't care whether you live in America. Some of my friends on Facebook live in Africa. Some of my friends on Facebook live in the Philippines. Some of my friends on Facebook live in Russia. I don't, it doesn't matter what government you're living under. If you're a believer, you're living in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You are living in what Jesus called the kingdom of the heavens. You are living under a whole new set of government and God calls your loyalty prior to your loyalty to wherever you live or whatever party you're with or whatever politics you hold. Our loyalty is to Jesus first. And, and brothers and sisters, if you don't understand the book of Revelation as a call to loyalty to Jesus first, you don't understand the book at all because that is one of the most explicit calls in the whole book. So let's make sure we get that message as we read through the book in its entirety. Notice every time he talks about powers or he talks about kingdom or he talks about the rulers or the ruler. All of those times he is he is opposing forces against Jesus. It's really important we catch that. The third thing he says is, and the patient endurance. And and I guess he saved that one for last because it's the one that he doesn't want us to forget. We gotta endure. Now, brother, you've just been through six months of enduring sometimes unbearable loneliness. Yes. Sometimes um just darkness that just overwhelmed you. But you held on. Or God held on to you. Yeah, God held on to me. And got you to a place where you can now see light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So the truth of the matter is, some of the suffering we're experiencing, Cap's already going, hey, listen, y'all, we got this. <laughs> If God can get me through what he got me through the last six months, this little COVID virus, it, it's going to, I, we both hurt for all the people that's causing the suffering. But the message you've got is trust God. Yep. He's going to get us through. He's going to get us through. It's give patient. It yeah, give it to God. He's going to get us through this. He is going to say, hey, we may suffer. Okay, that's point one. You know, um, we might file bankruptcy. We might lose a job. We might, you know, get have to have all the hassles of threats of creditors calling us. We might even end up in the hospital with a virus that's very, very serious. And God forbid someone may lose a loved one. I, I, I'm just not going to play games. The truth of the matter is suffering is coming with this pandemic. But I believe a study of Revelation and this chapter in particular calls us to patient endurance. And what we talked about Sunday was the patience of the persistent widow who keeps coming back to God, asking for what she wants, knowing that he's going to give it to her eventually. So that's the call for us tonight. That's the message I want to leave you with. I want you to to be willing to suffer for the cause of Christ, to hold your loyalty to King Jesus, and to patiently wait on God to turn this thing around and give us hope and give us a renewed sense of ministry and mission 
among our neighbors. Cap, thank you for sharing this time with me. You're welcome. I, I just wanted to bring up that one of the losses that I, I feel already is the fellowship in the church. Um, amen. And lot, several people have said that. And we, maybe we could call each other, just check on us, and just, just share our, our lives and what's going on in, in your particular house. It's my, my thought. I think that's beautiful. It, and just in case you couldn't hear it, Cap's encouraging us to be calling each other, checking on each other. Um, just making sure that um, everybody gets a chance to express their feelings and their and what they're thinking as as we're going through this together. Call each other. I'll uh, I'll post your your phone number and my phone number, and you can call us. God, thank you for a great night. Thank you for a beautiful place to sit on a porch and enjoy the evening. Thank you for the love that this church shares with each other. I thank you for the many stories I'm hearing of members of this church who are taking care of friends and neighbors. I thank you for loving us so much that we've become more like Jesus all the time. We love you, Father. We pray you would be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.